let's continue moving forward, Justin, with another very interesting and competitive division. All teams in this division last season had a winning record. I think it's the only division on our list where that is the case. Of course, I am talking about the Pacific Division. Quick breakdown of the records here. The Deep Clippers won this division with 51 wins last season. Obviously, pretty big change with Paul George leaving that team over the offseason. Second place was the, funnily enough, disappointing Phoenix Suns. Had a really tumultuous season, a lot of getting hit by the injury bug, yet still squeaked out 49 wins, which is not terrible. The Lakers, 47 wins. Keep in mind they had great health from both LeBron James and especially Anthony Davis to kind of lead the charge there. Sacramento Kings, one game behind them with 46 wins. And then the Golden State Warriors matching the Sacramento Kings with 46 wins as well. So everyone in this division, 46 wins or above. That's super impressive. And especially, you know, the Warriors were really talked down last season in terms of how they performed. Kind of shocking to me to go back and see that 46 win number. Justin, I'll go ahead and throw it to you to lead us off here. Who do you have in fifth place in this division, this Pacific division? I think this division is the Wolves and Chiefs clothing division, mm. where it's it's easy to pick a championship contender from this division, but you know they're going to disappoint you. And I know Kawhi's having issues in terms of he's going to be ready for the season to start. I just, man. I really do not like the Clippers. <laughs> and I think, to me, I think they're going to take a step back with missing Paul George. I understand they have Kawhi. I understand they got the new arena. Um, a lot of just some big, big things happening. But I think I, I picked them fifth. I, this is wow. a really tough division yep. for me to pick. And I do not like this team. And I think they need a total like rethinking of what this organization is going to be. Because I think they invested in a lot of just free agents. It kind of reminded me of like the next but West Coast version a little bit, just in terms of kind of taking players past their prime and there's just constant issues. So, yeah, I have them fifth place. I, I, I almost flip flopped with with them and the next team, but I am I have a high disdain for the Clippers, despite their new arena. New arena will be great. The Inuit Dome looks fantastic, but um, in terms of the squad, yeah, not very optimistic. Yeah, can you imagine with that new arena coming, oh, yeah. if Kawhi Leonard does not show up to games again this season, yeah. you know, I mean, unfortunate history there. And that's been the story of the tenure with the Clippers and for a long time with Kawhi Leonard, unfortunately. But I I like this pick. I've, I'm not there with you, but it's it's not as radical as it seems to go from one to five when there's only a five game difference yeah. between those two spots. It's tight so, division. So I like this this position and also, you know, what is James Harden going to do? How much does he have left in the tank? He got that extension. How's he going to perform? I, You know, it, it seems like he'd be a decent fit with Kawhi Leonard, but how much is this team really going to have? I went a different way and I've I've got the Warriors going fifth. I think a lot of these teams will take a step back. I agree with you that the Clippers will be one of those teams that takes a step back. I'm curious to see how the Warriors perform without Klay Thompson there. Yeah. Granted, you know, he was getting benched at times for his performance last season. It still feels like a locker room and, and spirit-wise level, there's there's something missing there with Klay Thompson now being gone. But I, I think this division is still going to be close in – in sections, I've got the Warriors just taking a step back. I think they're going to win less than 46 games that they won last year. Uh, so that's who I have fifth. You mentioned you have the Clippers fifth. Who do you have fourth? Yeah, I agree. I have the Warriors fourth. Um, mm. There's a huge step back, and they, they were in a bit of an identity crisis. And mm. I think right now it's either do you want to build rebuild this team around Steph Curry with the years he has left, or do you want to trade him and totally and Draymond Green? and rebuild um and i don't know really what they want to do because it just seems i got some young players but they all seem like they're good but not great mm -hmm. but i don't think they're enough to be like a championship contender just with like buddy heel the Clamingo, wiggins they're all like you see them they have flashes of brilliance but like they're, they're not going to carry you to any type of playoff success so um that's why i have them fourth 
All right. For me, for fourth, I like those comments, by the way. Fourth for me, I'm putting the circus in fourth. <laughs> and Lakers fans, you can come at me <laughs> later on if if I'm totally wrong, you know, clip this, whatever. But I have the Lakers going fourth here. I and a couple reasons why. New head coach. Uh, I think Good JJ point. Redick is a savvy mm-hmm. guy. I think he can have success, but it is still like turmoil and change. I think you had an ideal season with Anthony Davis. I'm worried about that repeating for next year. Hopefully it does. I don't know. And then this, this LeBron, Bronny sideshow type of thing. Okay. I, I get the feel good element of this story. Yeah. Most people on board with that, but is it really going to be beneficial to the Lakers if they get to a point where they're trying to force like five minutes a game, even where these two can play together. I don't know. Hope, hopefully they do it in a way where like Bronny is actually ready for that type of challenge. And we don't see highlights like we saw over summer league. I have a lot of questions and doubts, obviously. So Lakers are fourth for me. Uh, so I've got golden state fifth Lakers fourth, Justin, you've got the Clippers dropping to fifth, which I like um, as well as golden state warriors fourth. Who do you have in third? Well, I like the circus, so I have the Lakers in third place. All right, but not much more than me. (laughs) Yeah, not much, not much more, tomato, tomato. But I will say, I think the Bronny thing is going to be, he's going to be in the G League, and he'll pop in for some games, and I'll get high ratings and whatever. But the main story to me is Dalton Connect. I, I really like him, and I think Austin Reeves also not really heralded too much and he's been fantastic. So to me, if Dalton Connect can, you know, be of note here, I think I like them in summer league. And if LeBron and Anthony Davis stays healthy, I think they're gonna make some noise. And I say we saw in the Olympics, LeBron's it's not past his prime. Like there's still something there. So I don't know, especially with the Suns and really a, I think a Sacramento Kings team that have been somewhat inconsistent in terms of taking the throne of being a Western Conference elite team. I think the Lakers can be a threat despite like all their circus issues. And I think the beauty with JJ is he's a first year head coach, but he's with a machine with LeBron and Anthony there. As long as those two guys are running the show there and they're relatively healthy. I think it'll be kind of be an, kind of a more easy transition to what we're expecting with JJ. I think his issue is going to be more just player personnel issues than anything else. But I think with that roster, at least there's some room there if everything breaks their way for them to surprise some people. So I'm optimistic on the Lakers despite having them third. I will say I think how they handle the Brawny thing, like you mentioned, if 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 it's a serious effort and they start him in the G League, like what yeah. you mentioned. And Hopefully. he shows everyone in that locker room that he's earning it. Good. More power to him. And that's the way it should be done. If this becomes more on the side of like a circus, I could see that locker room like checking out uh, aside from maybe the closest guys to LeBron. Uh, LeBron does have like a history. He's such a mega star. Not all of it is on him, but there is a history of like him being walled off from the rest of his roster and talks in the middle of the season of who's staying, who is LeBron trading, you know, whether that's fair or not, that, that has been a scenario we've seen play out in every one of his destinations. Yeah. And so there's volatility here would be, I guess, my caution. I'll just add in really quickly that my third place is a team we've already talked about our concerns with the Clippers. So I have the Clippers in third, winning less games, I should say, compared to last year. I definitely I have the Clippers under 50 wins for sure as a lock. I have the Lakers winning less games than their 47 games they won last year. And I do have the Warriors winning less games than their 46 wins last year. So that's my three, four, five. Justin, you mentioned the Lakers as your three. So we have both in agreement here. Top two is going to be some mix of Phoenix or Sacramento at the top. Give me your number two. Yeah, I'll go real quick. I get, I picked the Phoenix Suns. I just think, Mm. I don't know, this might be, this is not based on any kind of fact, but I just think this team's kind of jinxed. Like I just feel Mm. like something bad's going to happen. So, but I do think there's enough talent for them to be better than the teams lower than them. But in terms of them being any type of a playoff threat, I don't think so. I think, I don't know, Durant twists his ankle, 
Booker gets hurt. Beal is still recovering from, you know, what he's been going through last year. I, I think when they're healthy, I think they can be very formidable, but I don't know. I just have a bad feeling with this team. And I think that continues with them being second um, compared to the first team on this list. But they're, I think they're an easy pick to win the division with their talent. No, no doubt when healthy, it is pretty stacked. Well, let me tell you, because Phoenix had that tumultuous year, I I took the easy pick and I did pick Phoenix Makes winning sense. this division. Yeah. So we're we're in slight disagreement there. I do think they had again kind of some savvy minimum ads on this team that should help them out. I'm with you that I feel a sense of doubt here too, just not compared to the other doubts that we've already mentioned about this division and how that's going to impact them. Like with the spoils of talent in, in the stars there. And, and you know me, I also, I, I don't really prefer these super team type of builds. I have a lot of questions, especially about Bradley Beal, but man, I, I think they have enough. And if they just don't have the terrible luck that they had last year, they should be number one here in my opinion. But I like that you pick the Kings number one for your pick. I do love the leadership that DeMar DeRozan is bringing to this team. It feels like that is a huge element that this this roster makeup was missing. So even if he's not Chicago Bulls DeMar DeRozan, that element of leadership is why I have the Kings vaulting all the way from fourth up to second here uh, for my ranking. Justin, you have them first. Give me some more thoughts that you have about the Kings and and why you feel so bullish on them. I do. And again, it's a biased pick, but I think, you know, DeMar really found his groove um, back in Chicago. I know he's going through some personal issues when he was in San Antonio, but I really feel like his competitive spirit and his efficiency Really, I think, had Chicago overachieve, and now he's with a team that is primed um, to really make some noise in the playoffs. And I think that continues with his veteran leadership, mm-hmm. something that's been missing with this team that is added with DeMar on there. So, um, yeah, it was, I was going back and forth. This was a really tough division for me to pick, but overall, I just think the Kings, I see them being more consistent, especially with DeMar DeRozan being crazy efficient. Yeah, I like the picks. Guys, I'd be curious to know your thoughts on how this division shakes out because we have probably the most changes and and variables here compared to any other division with how close it was last year and the major changes that went on. So give us your one through five rankings in the comments and let us know how you see the Pacific division shaking out. Do you see the Lakers being a circus or or a serious threat? Are the Phoenix Suns kind of star-crossed or will they get over the hump here and, and kind of meet expectations of that super team build. Let us know in the comments. 